it, Avengers Endgame happened. And if you didn't see it by now, man, it's okay for you to get spoiled on it because it's been a while. It's been a while. But, so, I saw this movie, and for some reason, this movie kind of inspired me to start, like, really working into my comic. Like, it was it was really sad to see Cap gone, um, Black Widow gone, everybody gone. So my brain was just like, you need to create some characters that you like so you can, you know, feel good again. So I started drawing again. Like, uh, I'm working on my comic once again, and, you know. I started building up characters, sketching, sketching, researching, reading, doing all these different things, you know. So, basically a lot of, a lot of my characters either died or, you know, went to the past and did different things, became Professor Hulk. I don't understand. I like Professor Hulk, I'm not going to lie, but people did not like it, you know. Um, like, that movie was so awesome that it made me want to do other things like, you know, like just work on big moments like that like just have crazy characters and you know kind of it's like having your toys play you know when you get to sketch and do different things so i started drawing right and i was reading this book where they were like you need to post your process so people you know your friends can keep up with what you're doing and when you're ready to really do things you might have a base a network of people that are willing to support you once you're actually to that point so, I've been working on, you know, my comic that's not named yet. Uh, I worked on it last year, finished it last year, and didn't put it out because I lost a script. I don't know how that happens, but it's like the file I had it on, the email I had it on, for some reason I deleted it. And then I didn't have a hard copy. And I was like, yo, what kind of irresponsible grown man <laughs> loses the whole script? So... I'm currently rewriting the whole thing because, I mean, I think it was for the best. I kind of didn't, wasn't feeling it. So I started writing it again. Started redrawing some of the scenes that really didn't feel good to me. But, you know, I mean, this is more of a, what people call that, that, that artist thing where you're just like, I don't want to put it out yet until it's perfect. But it's really not that. I, right now, I'm in this process of playing around with my comic. Like, I'm not drawing like super perfect right now i'm kind of just drawing a whole bunch of stick figures and pose gestures and trying out different like styles that i loved from like you know negima because negima is one of my my influences for my comics um there's also uh history strong disciple you know amazing spider-man and then i'm taking a lot of color inspiration from ultimate spider-man miles morales I'm taking a lot of different influences right now and kind of just sketching like um, uh, right now you're probably watching one of my sketching videos. I kind of put them in a, comp a compilation for this video where it's just a whole bunch of different things that I'm sketching or things that I surround my desk with. So I feel inspired every day, you know, uh, like right now I'm trying to make sure I ingest enough inspiration and I read enough books to basically edify myself because in the daytime I'm teaching and then nighttime I'm teaching myself and I'm drawing like I'm teaching kids web design but in the simplest way like wix.com I'm not gonna lie wix.com has stepped up this game when I was a, like an art student I was like I'll never use wix and then I'm looking at this journal like yo I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna hold you WordPress even though you're my website right now I'm kind of like in Wix. Wix takes like five seconds. Like, you know how much websites I've made on Wix? But it's just that, you know, it's the template system people don't like. But it, it, it kind of makes it simpler to just create something real quick, post it on, and be done. But for me, I think I would lose my mind because I'm a, a designer and I wouldn't like anything there. Um, so, truth of the matter is, I kind of got really inspired, uh by the movie that I saw, like, Avengers Endgame, like, it got me really into comics, like, the big moment, like, when Thor summons two hammers, and my girlfriend didn't notice it, no one noticed, I, no one that I knew noticed it, but the crack of the lightning, the thunder, when he summoned the, the two hammers, it was amazing, it was like, this, it was like a different sound, like, I was telling my girlfriend, I was, I was crying the entire time, not because it was the sad moments, but I was crying of, sh like, because of the sheer awesomeness, like, I don't know if you guys had that moment where, 
you know, you, you feel something like when I saw him, when I saw a freaking Captain America was two piece in, like I got choked up because it was such a cool, awesome moment that I was like, yes, yes, yes. You know, and I know the female part was pandering, but I loved it. I was like, yo, first of all, even though y'all got Captain Marvel's back, Captain Marvel will wash up Thanos. She was about to wash him up. There was no doubt about it. But I just love that Okoye immediately stabs that freaking jackal dude in the chest. Like, she did not wait. She was like, remember that time when you held us back and you killed up a whole bunch of Wakanda? Well, I'm about to stab you. Like, she, it was on sight. She just stabbed him. Bam, stabbed him. You know, Scarlet Witch came in hot. Thanos is like, yo, who are you? Why are you beefing with me? She was like, you about to find out. Whooped him. I was like, this was a beautiful movie. So I got hype. I wanted to build my own character. So I started drawing. Like, you'll probably see um, Kevin, one of my characters. That's his working name right now. I'm, I keep calling him Kev. Because um, I used to name all my characters after me. I used to be like, yeah, this is Kadeem and Kadeem. But it gets kind of weird drawing yourself in weird moments. Make it too personal. Like, you know, uh, so I'm like, let's make this character someone else based off of someone else. You know, most of these characters are based off of real people that you guys hopefully will never meet. <laughs> um, like my, my, um, the bully in the thing, he's built, he's basically made off of like five different people that were just like not good people like i was reading the book from stanley how to write you know for comics and it was kind of like he was saying you gotta take from life or you have to go out and study random things like you have to go on the train and draw people go on the train and write go coffee shop you go to different places and get inspired so i like and i was reading this while i was next to my girlfriend on the bus to ac um atlantic city so I kind of just was reading this book and kind of getting inspired. Stanley was saying some things. And I don't know why it becomes so much deeper when the person is dead. It feels like they're speaking to you, like, personally. Uh, and it was kind of just like, I don't know. But did he write this book? I think he wrote this book. His picture's on the front where he's drawing people. Like, I have three of his books right now. <laughs> and um, the writing one kind of touched me more than the drawing one. The drawing one... Uh, was really cool. I used to love, I used to stare at it. Cause I was like, yo, how do they do that? Those poses, dramatic poses. And, uh, they literally were like, push your pose. Like every pose you do, make it more dramatic. Make it like if the person is punching, make them swing their whole body. Like, and it's, if you think about Dragon Ball Z like that, Dragon Ball Z was one of those shows where even though no one screams like that while they're fighting, it made you feel it. It was so much more dramatic because they were screaming and punching. And when they punched, it was like lightning fast. And even though I'm not going to lie, that's a cheat. That's how you cheat in animation. You just make it really fast and really, you know, blur punches. And you can keep um, recycling those frames. It was really great because, you know, it was just like, oh, that's how intense it is. They're fighting so fast. They're in the sky and they're flying and power lightning striking because Gohan is like, you know, hype and anger you know angry all these different things so i was like let me push my animation all this stuff um speaking of animation uh so i kind of i know this is lame but i kind of took like a hiatus over the animation because the thing is i was looking at was animation like for animated thoughts even though i love doing animated thoughts because of the jokes like every one minute animation takes forever like if it's not just one character and then looped animation, it takes forever to do, you know. And on my schedule, it's really difficult to do many of those. So I'm thinking of doing it in a different format. Like, you know, uh, like I still tell the stories, but maybe the animation is really limited. Like, even the shows, that, the one that I did, like, a few weeks ago, that one was really, really limited. But it still took so freaking long. Like, I'm not going to lie, uh, even though Adobe Animate is a great program, it doesn't make it easy to export. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, I just want to put it, uh, you know, export it to MOV and then make it in, like, but just edit it all in um, Premiere, you know, real easy, easy steps. But then it's like, oh, yeah, um, 
it's taking so long to render like a 30 second thing. And then on top of that, you know, I did it the long way where, you know, I was listening to the one podcast where someone was saying you need to make separate files for each piece of your animation, but then they don't really tell you how to go about doing that. So I was just learning and doing different process. I kind of got frustrated and was like, I can't do this no more. It takes so long to do this one thing, you know, but, um, I had one episode that I'm doing that's like based off of my grandmother's house, which was for me, it was a really funny episode to do. And I looked up the location of her old house because she moved now and her old house looks like trash because apparently whoever they sold it to, they kind of just trashed the house and it became a crack den. I'm just like, Jesus, why? Why? Um, But so uh, for these last couple of months, I've been recording my drawings and drawing a couple of things like right now this month we're in may and there's this thing called mermaid i learned it from the bancroft brothers podcast where you kind of every day has a new theme just like inktober and you draw mermaids right so this month is mermaids and i'm just going through different things so uh, you're probably seeing the mermaid right now that i drew in a throw i think it was called like extravagance so i drew like um, this really extravagant throne and it's so funny because my whole life people have been doing these little throne celebrations where every time somebody has a baby they're on a throne every time they get married they're on a throne and I'm just like why does every time you you know every time you get on a throne you have to be either getting married or having a baby I'm like do you not want to just be like I think if you really want to be on the throne, yo, just buy yourself a throne, sit in your your house, and just, hmm, meditate on your thing. Like, because you're renting these straw thrones from places like um, Valencia down the block. You're renting it from these little, you know, these little spots, and they're charging you, woo and then you're returning it. And I'm like, so you're only a queen when you get pregnant? Nah, son. You queen all year round. When you when you uh when you worked hard, you paid all your bills for an entire week. Get yourself sit in your throne real quick. Have some some Chardonnay. I don't know what kind of wine y'all drink. I drink that yellow tail. My girlfriend's gonna tell me I said it wrong. Um, you need to basically treat yourself when it's not just um a special time. Like uh uh, but I mean. Again, these things are special, but not only one. But this comic that I'm working on, right? <laughs> this is like me just um, vomiting all information on you. This comic that I'm working on right now, it's kind of based in magic, right? It's based in magic and superhero stuff. So I'm working on that. Like, Negima is the perfect inspiration for it. The way they did it, used to I used to love it. So right now I'm working on mastering anatomy, making things look like they're really moving, make, like making characters feel real and you know believable, so you can suspend belief, suspend you know common sense. Like I have to learn how to build in my mind and paper build uh, settings, right? And I'm kind of considering, even though I want to do it myself, I'm considering hiring one of my friends to help me out because then they like this dude that I know he's a beast at landscapes and making it look realistic and all these things he's really good at it and um I think I'm good at pushing poses so I kind of just want to go in with that and have him create the world like his characters are really beautiful like uh what's his thing I think is like Art Jamlot Art Jamlot is Jamel he's like really talented at that so I kind of want to um I think I'm thinking I'm thinking if I ever get enough money to do it so like but I'm I'm thinking of hiring people. I'm trying to get to that part where, you know, I can kind of uh, delegate certain work so I can just move faster. Um, I'm like word vomiting everything. Let's see, where did I get to? Rewriting the comic. Yeah, being motivated and sad. Being motivated and sad is a real thing. Um, what was this, this guy's writer? Um, Neil Gaiman, he had this one thing where he was saying, right when you're happy, right when you're sad, if your girlfriend break up with you, right? If you're if you're getting sued, right? If you're getting fired, right? Or draw, like do, create art. Every time something's wrong, create art. You know, or every time something's right, create art. Like every time the mood strikes you, every time it's not striking you, create art anyway. And that's how you get good. That's how you get where you want to be. Like everything I've been reading and everybody that's successful keeps saying, is that the way to succeed in something is to show up no matter what. 
And I keep trying to drive that to my students where I'm saying to them, hey, look, I know you don't want to work today. I know you're frustrated. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. Suck up your pride and do it anyway. Like, um, I have one protege right now. He's like, he's really fascinated with girls right now. And I get it. You're a teen. Uh, like, shoot, as an adult, you still get fascinated. Like, you know, my girlfriend comes over. I'm probably not going to do any work. That's why I have to get all the work done during the week. Because I know once we hang out, we're like, par- like not really partying, but we're running around the town and, you know, doing all the craziness. So, like, but he's distracted. And then he comes back and goes, I really want to learn this. And I'm like, dude, I give you an assignment and you didn't get it done. And that's the thing. You have to literally put yourself in that position. Like, uh, I used to really get uh, amped by these movies that tell you to put your all into something. But they don't explain how. They just say, the music will strike you and you have to do it. And da 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 But no, there is no music half the time. Like right now... This recording took me three days to make, not because I kept doing it over and over, but because I had to sit down, draw all those things, those things that you're seeing on the screen. I had to go film myself and then record my own voice. And I had to convince myself to finish this thing. Um, I realized, like, I've been doing so much for my job, which for me, when I do my job, um, I'm the graphic designer for my school which is a huge job because every time something happens, I have to, like, I feel responsible every time I miss something that was important. Like if I miss telling the kids about, you know, last payment for prom or something, I feel responsible. But the truth of the matter is, um, I'm doing so much for my, my class personally. And then I do stuff for the school, like celebrating a day, you know, certain things because you, everything I do, I'm so used to working, um, with someone that's given me all their information and at my job, because people are used to hoarding things like information or pictures, they hoard their information in their pictures and I have to dig it from them. I have to cultivate relationships and then find it. So I'm doing two jobs at once. Even though it's, for me, the most important job is for me to teach kids how to be, I'm going to say, business-minded. And not in the way that I say, oh, you're trying to get a job. No, I want you to start thinking like an entrepreneur from now. Like, even if I told this kid the smallest thing you could do, go around your house, fix things, then take $15, buy yourself a shirt that says your name and what you do. Real short. So if your name's Mark, Marksman, I don't know, Marksman like a shooter or something like that, but something like, you know, Mark Smith or your something, something creative, like says that, oh, that you fix things. The kid was like, like I fixed it. I said, yeah, fix them around your house and tell your mom to tell everybody else that you can do it for like $10. I said, go around for $10 and fix things. Right. Because by the end of it, while you're fixing things, people give you a little change, like in every Jamaican household I've ever been to, they ask you to fix a little something, something. And if they're really good people, they'll say, thank you so much for doing a great job. I know this took a lot of work on your Saturday. They give you a little bit of pocket money. Even if it's not pocket money, they'll tell somebody else that, yo, he did a really good job. He makes sure the work is done. Like, put in your work now so later you can make. Like, um, Gary Vee was not lying when he said you need to make use of that sweat equity. Like, let me tell you something. I'm coming up on the last minute of this podcast. Um, people at my job are, um, receiving pink slips. I have a pink slip on my, um, my wall because I need to remind myself every day that no matter how good I think I am, no matter what I've done so far, I'm never too good to receive one. I've received it before in the mail. I've received it. And even though I'm not receiving it, who knows if my job doesn't go sideways in the next couple of months where I'm just like, I can't do this anymore because I've had, I've had months where I've had horrible people to deal with and it made me hate life. Like you ever hated life? Not like, Oh man, this is so tiring. No, no, no. Like you wake up with dread. That's the worst feeling ever right now. I'm good. Cause I'm just like, yo, I'm not coasting, but I'm excelling, but you can have some days that make you want to not get up out of bed. No matter how much money you're getting paid, you feel like you're not doing nothing. So, 
I have my, um, what they call an excess litter on my ceiling, staring at me every morning. It's to remind me to get up off my butt and do my own business because I can't be here forever. And I try to drive that to everybody. If you have a passion that you know, you know you can do it and you don't need anybody to tell you to do it. You can push yourself, push yourself, even if it's not like something you want to do right now because you'd rather be sleeping or watching Game of Thrones, watching Netflix. Like, trust me, I get all of that. I love Netflix. My girlfriend will tell you that I will spend too much time watching a show. Spend at least an hour a day on your own passion and then maybe after after you've exhausted everything you have within you, right as you're about to go to bed, after you're about to touch your pillow, turn on like an hour of the show and then just watch it. But don't spend six hours after work <laughs> watching the show instead of spending the six hours working on your business. This is me doing that. I know it's been a while since I've heard, you know. This is going to be on KadeemandFriends.com. That's the website where I'm going to be kind of posting stuff like but it's still gonna come on youtube guys um i'm gonna be promoting a lot more of these things that i'm working on posting a lot more illustrations because illustrations are easier to do than animations i'm going to try to get more stories out to you guys because i do have a lot to tell um so bear with me i am going through self-discovery right now which is a weird thing to be going through when you're about to hit the age of like 28 i think i don't know how old i am is that bad um i think i'm 28 am i 28 Oh my gosh, when the hell did that happen? Anyway, guys, this was Kadeem and Friends, and I was Kadeem. See you next time.